Hello, I'm District 5 Council Member Skip Hall, and welcome to Council Conversations, where today we're talking about sports, recreation, and tourism. I know many of you are familiar with the great work of our Community and Recreation Services Department. They operate our parks and our recreation and special interest classes. They also put on some great community events, like our annual surprise party, the Veterans Day Parade, and the Fiesta Grande. I'm fortunate to be joined by the CRS Director Donna Miller and Assistant Director Paul Free, who will give us an update on the great things they're working on in Surprise. Donna and Paul, thanks for being here. We've had several recreation projects completed this year, one being the recent the pickleball courts. So when will those be open to the public? Those eight new courts will be open at the end of this month. Uh, we will be having a uh, ribbon cutting on Saturday, December 16th at 10 a.m. 16th, okay. And special thanks to our uh, Spies Pickleball Association. They've made a donation, and we will be installing uh, two shade structures as well as four sets of bleachers, and those will be wow. ready in January. Very good. Speaking of donations, uh, the Friends of the Library donated some money for Hollyhock Library, right, to expand the hours? They did. Um, our friends of the Surprise Libraries uh, made a donation, so Hollyhock Library in the original town site is now open on Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. We also adjusted the hours during the week a bit. We found that the, in order for kids to get there after school, um, we did adjust those hours from 1 p.m. in the afternoon till 7 p.m. Oh, super. Excellent. Hey, Paul, what, are, what, what community events can we look forward to this year? We got a couple of great ones coming up. Um, in fact, we, with a couple changes that I think the community be, will be really excited about because we are. Um, our normal second Sundays in the park um, will be moving to the eight acres instead of being in the community park. Oh, okay. We'll be in the eight acres and we're adding a food truck component. There'll be eight to 10 food trucks um, oh, on that Sunday, as well as a beer tent uh, sponsored by State 48 Brewery. Uh -huh. So those, those events um, should be pretty exciting. January- and State 48's a local Yes, they are right here in Surprise. Yes, so. they are. So we've partnered with them. They're going to sell their beer um, on site. And that's January 14th, February 11th, uh, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. on the eight acres. Okay. And then March 11th, because it's in the middle of spring training, we'll go 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., but still on the eight acres. Super. Uh, we also have the spring extravaganza coming up uh, March 31st. That'll be on the Kansas City Royals practice fields. Uh, the gates will open at 730 in the morning with the first hunt starting at 820. Uh, and then bouncy games, food vendors, uh, things for the kids to do. That's always a great event. That's usually one of our most attended events of the year. Great. And just to be clear, the eight acre park is that park just north of the stadium. Correct, just north of the stadium parking lot um, with right. the brand new fence around you it. Just put the brand new, yeah, yep. exactly. Super. So what upcoming recreation programming is available for our youth? Or Donna? Yeah, so we have a full slate for a winter and spring um, in our next brochure. We, for um, youth, uh, grades K through sixth grade, we have a winter and a spring break camp at Sierra Montana Recreation Center. Great. It's open for parents from 6.30 in the morning until 6 p.m. So those kids will be able to take part in field trips and crafts and have guest speakers come and much more. Excellent, excellent. So what, uh, what are the future goals of the Recreation Department? Uh, future goals really just to um, continue to work on our master plan. Um, we, you know, there's several components and goals to that. Um, one being continue the quality of life for our residents and mm. in, invest in our current assets that we have. It's important mm. we take care of those. Um, we also want to promote active recreation, um, also provide a connected park experience, and then lastly, um, continue to work on developing our park system. So we work really closely with planning any opportunities there are to pursue open space or future parks, we're working on that. That's great, Donna. Super, I'm glad to hear that that's the priority is to, to maintain what we have. Mm -hmm. That's really so important. And we've got some great parks. It's just we've got to keep them maintained and looking sharp, you know, looking fresh. So I appreciate that. So Donna and Paul, thank you for joining me today and sharing these updates with our viewers. Coming up next, We'll be talking with Kendra and Joe from our newly formed Sports and Tourism Department. We'll be right back. Bad driving affects us all. The 
population is up, and so are accidents. So when you're on the road, think safe and pay attention. One bad decision can impact a life forever. Drive wise, surprise. Welcome back. Earlier this year, the city created a new sports and tourism department to assist in attracting larger, more regional events to bring more visitors to our city. With me now is sports and tourism director Kendra Pettis and assistant director Joe Bertoletti, who will explain how this new department will bring a unique dynamic and many great things to surprise. Thank you both for being here. Thank Thanks you for, for having, having us. us. So tell me and us about the new sports and tourism department. Sure, so our department will focus on, on really expanding the, the current tourism related events that we have now. So spring training, college baseball, tennis tournaments, um, and then we'll continue to grow those relationships with our valued partners like the Kansas City Royals, Texas Rangers, USTA, um, Chamber of Commerce, and then we'll really look to um, grow new events and new tourism related um, activities um, that will bring additional sporting and cultural enri enrichment to into the community and also bring visitors year round. Good, super. Very good. So you mentioned spring training or the, the baseball being part of the department. What can, can you share any highlights with us about what's coming on the spring training? Great question. We have a great schedule coming up this year. We have the Royals will kick off their season on the 24th of February, a little bit earlier than it has in the past. Yes. And then the Rangers will kick off their season on the 25th. Both of those first pitches are at uh, 105. Okay. And the, we have 31 games on the schedule this year. So six of them are night games, and the one that we're kind of circling on our schedule is the game on the 12th of March, when it's the Rangers versus the Royals at 6.05. It's our charity game. So okay. all the proceeds will benefit the Sundancer Foundation, which oh, for super. everyone here in Surprise probably have met, seen the Sundancers at our games, and it's over 700 volunteers that help us make this one of the best atmospheres in spring training. That's great. And so tickets all go on sale December 9th, on surprisespringtraining.com as well as by calling the box office at 623-222-2222. As many of the residents know that the, all of the spring training teams in the Cactus League will be making their way through, the spring train, through our spring training facility, including the National League champion Los Angeles Dodgers and a fan favorite, the Chicago Cubs. Oh yeah, that's a big favorite. So for the residents that are thinking about coming to the stadium for spring training, what can they look forward to this year? Sure, so this year we're really gonna focus on the fan experience. So what that means is we wanna kind of connect to those fans from the second they walk into the stadium until after the game is over. And so we're really looking to bring new opportunities into, into the games and, and really enhance that experience for the fan. Super, that's very good. So what other festival events and events is your team working on, Kendra? Sure, so we have our two college tournaments that will come um, starting February 16th will be the first tournament. Um, both will be hosted by Oregon State University. Um, we're also adding a new 5K run to spring training. So March 2nd, we don't have a spring training game and we're gonna add a new 5K run that will start and end in the stadium. So just a new oh. addition to, to the spring training experience. Um, and then um, like Donna and Paul had mentioned, we are partnering with their department and State 48, which on the second Sundays to just enhance that experience and, and grow the partnership there. Um, we also have our Mayor's, Mayor's Welcome Back Lunch, which, which will be um, February 21st. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're really looking to partner with third party events throughout the year that will bring new events into our community and, and really target those regional, um, regional activities. Okay, great. So tennis, is a big component of, of your department. So what, what can we look forward to in terms of tournaments in the future? Well, we just finished up our fall season where we had five tournaments in six weeks, bringing in about 1,200 people from all over the country here to Surprise to play tennis. Wow. Uh, we also have two tournaments coming up in January that'll bring a lot more visitors to the complex and also kind of expand our footprint with the tennis community. Mm -hmm. We're gonna continue working with our partner, the United States Tennis Association, to bring more tournaments here to Surprise, as well as bring a little bit more spotlight to what we can do with our tennis complex. 
And then great, as, great. as Donna and Paul mentioned, we just, uh, we just are gonna open those pickleball courts here and that'll give us the opportunity to host some pickleball tournaments and bring more people to the city surprise through that sport as well. The, the Pickleball Association says that there's a lot of opportunity for tournaments, so I... Yeah, our team's out there looking for it <laughs> and we're gonna put some tournaments together and make sure people know that this is a pickleball hotspot. Yeah, that's great, that's great. So uh, Ottawa, Ottawa University of Arizona, it's now open. Uh, what's it been like on the campus this inaugural year, Kendra? It's been great, and you know, it's been really exciting to see the students arrive, and they just bring a new energy to the campus and to the city itself. Um, and Ottawa is kind of one of those, those public-private partnerships that we're looking to do. You know, they were a partner here at the community university for over nine years, and, and both parties realized that there was an opportunity to expand their services here and offer um, the full undergraduate program and the residential experience as well as the 21 collegiate sports. So we're just really excited to have Ottawa here and they've had a great first um, semester. So they started with 434 students. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's been great. They just completed their um, football and soccer field um, over the last Beautiful couple field. weeks. It's, yes, it's Beautiful. gorgeous. So we, we're very excited to see what they're going to do in the future and they've been a great partner and, and just a lot of energy to, to the campus itself. That's great. That's great. And the, the plan is for their future campus to be how many acres? 35 acres. So 35, 35 acres. acres. And then they hope to expand into about 3,000 students within the next 10 years. Gotcha. So, I, me personally, I think that's very doable. I do too. They've had a great response. They, they only announced in February, so they thought they would probably hit about 150 students for this for August start, and they ended up with over 400, so they were very pleased with that turnout, and, and they've, um, they're looking to offer a lot of new activities and clubs in, in the 2018 year, so look for new scholarships in engineering, education club, DECA club. They're also even starting um, like an ultimate Frisbee club team that they'll have scholarships and bowling, and so some really good opportunities, and they're really looking to kind of round out their student population with adi right. additional activities and it's kind of for the the student who really wants to participate in their college that's excellent well before we leave i just want to point out something you you came to this department as the leader from internally mm -hmm. you were part of our economic development department and you did a great job there uh, and you were also you were pretty much the primary liaison with ottawa weren't you mm -hmm. Yep. While, while we're going through this transition, yeah. Yes, so there were two project managers and I was one of them. Um, and so I really got to see um, Ottawa over the last couple of years just grow into yeah. what they are today and it's been exciting. Well, they speak highly of you, so that's great. And Joe, you came to us from where? Came from the College of the Holy Cross, which is a Division I institution located in Worcester, Massachusetts, which is about 35, 40 minutes outside of Boston. Okay. So I've worked the past 10 years in collegiate athletics and spent a lot of time in the revenue generation area, building facilities and working with schools like Holy Cross to Good. enhance their athletic program. Excellent. So I think we got a strong team. And I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's great. Kendra and Joe, thank you again for sharing this information with me and our viewers. This is really an exciting time for our city, and I look forward to where we are headed. I hope you enjoyed our talk today. If you have any questions or comments, please call me or email me. I also welcome you to sign up for my weekly newsletter filled with the latest city news and information. Just click on the Notify Me button on my website to sign up. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to visiting again soon.